guys. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Whoa, Santa, by the way, do you remember how you came to this world? Sure, one beautiful day, my mother gave birth to me. <laughs> yeah, right. Actually, in the 3rd century AD in the Roman province of Lycia, in Asia Minor, there lived a young man, Nicholas, who as a child decided to devote himself to religion. Unfortunately, his parents died, but they left a pretty big inheritance, which he distributed to poor and the needy. Over time, Nick took courses with his uncle, the bishop, who later ordained him a priest. Eventually, he made him the bishop of Merlicia. By the way, beloved by the people. Yep, you guessed it. Of course, for giving all his inheritance to the poor. Even though he was doing it quietly and secretly. For some reason, everyone knew that it was Bishop Nicholas. The legend has it that Nick somehow found out that there were three sisters. Mega beauties. But their dad couldn't leave them a good dowry since he was very poor. And, well, he was also a rare asshole. Because instead of marrying them to some rich guys, he decided to sell them to a freaking brothel. So, Nicholas found out about this, took three bags of gold and decided to give it to them. But we remember that he loved anonymity. So he decided to throw the bags into the house through the chimney without getting caught. These bags ended up right in the stockings, hung out near the fireplace to dry. Of course, as always, everyone found out about it. And eventually, they began to celebrate it. On December 6th or 18th, I have no idea about their stupid calendar. Namely, giving presents to children, putting them in socks by the fireplace, and then saying that Saint Nicholas himself did it. A kind, grey-bearded old man in a long-flapped bishop's attire and a high headdress. Like, he climbs the roof of every house and goes down the chimney. Then, in the Reformation era, when Protestants fought with the Catholic custom of venerating saints, well, as with idolatry, the gift-giving ritual shifted to Christmas with its baby Jesus. And Saint Nicholas remained as the main Christmas benefactor in only a few countries. Holland was one of those countries from which in the 18th century he migrated to America along with a wave of Dutch settlers. Saint Nicholas in Dutch sounds like Sinterklaas. And since very few people could really understand each other at the time, at first Sinterklaas was renamed Santa Claus and then Santa Claus. The English Puritans who lived in the US next to the Dutch did not celebrate Christmas as a family holiday where gifts needed to be given. Nevertheless, there was such an old character in English folklore named Father Christmas, who symbolized not so much the Christian custom of generous sharing with neighbors, but rather a pagan love for unbridled joy during the holidays. He was a fat, bearded man in a short jacket with fur, who liked to drink beer, eat and dance to groovy melodies. As a result, over time everything got a little confused and mixed up, so Father Christmas got the mission to give gifts to children. And Santa got the look and the love to party. And the only thing left of Nicholas is the red color of clothes. The development of the image of Santa Claus continued in America in 1822, when Clement Clark Moore wrote the poem The Night Before Christmas or A Visit from St. Nicholas for His Children. The poem is a story told by a father of a family who wakes up on a Christmas night and watches Santa's sleigh pulled by reindeer flying through the sky. And Santa himself descends the chimney to put gifts for children in stockings hung by the fireplace. By the way, he also gave the names to eight reindeer from Santa's team. Six English, Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, Vixen, Comet and Cupid. And two German, Blitzen and Donner. The ninth and main deer, Rudolf, whose huge shining red nose illuminates the path for the whole team, appeared more than a hundred years later, in 1939, in a poem by Robert L. May. Santa Claus acquired his final well-known appearance in America in 1863. American Thomas Nast painted a pink-cheeked, white-bearded old man in red clothes riding a sleigh pulled by a reindeer. As a result, Santa Claus became a part of the culture of all English-speaking countries, returning across the ocean to his ancestral homeland of Britain, and from there reaching 
Australia. Later, a new tradition appeared to leave a treat for Santa on Christmas night by the fireplace. In America and Canada, it's milk and cookies. In England and Australia, a glass of sherry or a bottle of beer with a piece of meat pie. And in 2008, he was altogether granted Canadian citizenship. While and for the fact that Santa became known to the whole world, the blame is on the deity of the 20th century, His Majesty Marketing. <sighs> yeah. In the 1930s, the Coca-Cola company, of course, with my help, wanted to sell its drink in winter and decided to use Santa in their ads, having slightly adjusted him. Yes, yes. This very cheerful, ruddy old man in red and white clothes bringing joy and fun to every home along with a bottle of coke. At the same time, actors portraying Santa became to work on the holidays in decorated shopping centers and at Christmas markets to communicate with children, listen to their cherished wishes, meanwhile subtly promoting the goods. Even before Coke, I had some work with Santa, namely promoting mineral water and ginger ale and Zippo lighters. That's how the holy benefactor Bishop Nicholas turned into Santa a marketed, pot-bellied merry-go-round with his reindeer. Well, that's all for today. It was Brock from Broccoli Academy. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year! Well, guys, this is the end of 2021, in which we met. I hope that 2022 will be several times cooler, both for you and for me, and for the channel, and will finally gain well, at least a hundred thousand subscribers. In the meantime, as always, if everything rolled into you, then leave a like, subscribe, comment and share. And of course, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year 2022, everyone.